Okay, this is uh, Adam for today. Adam did something wrong. He sinned. These are people, men, and sin passed to Adam, free. This guy, whether it's good or bad, makes no difference. Make sure, make sure you follow me now. No matter how good his work, no matter how kind he is, is he going to hell? <laughs> Why? Because of Adam. Sin passed to all men. Became a free gift. It doesn't matter what he's doing. This is Jesus, the second and last Adam. He became righteous. And all those who believe in him, righteousness passed to them, whether they are good or bad. He became a gift. So, if this guy good work cannot make him righteous, this guy bad work cannot make him unrighteous. <laughs> The Bible says, for God to be a just God, for him to be a just God, since he made this guy a sinner without choice. Then, when the second Adam comes, he made this guy righteous without anything. So as bad as he is, he cannot be unrighteous. So when you begin to understand the life of faith, this is where many people make the mistake about faith. So to declare and say at this time, God's righteousness, that God might be just. He might be a just God. Why? Because Adam sinned, and all of us that didn't, were not in the garden, and we behave better than Adam, were still condemned. So for him to be a just God, he becomes the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. That is so important. See? In the life of faith, understand something as I read. Don't think you'll be successful because of your good behavior. I want to listen again. Don't think you'll be successful. Somebody said, well, in the last three weeks, I've not done anything wrong. So, I will get a miracle. No, 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 no. Don't think you'll be successful because you've not done anything wrong. Many people think, oh, I'm a nice guy. I'm a good guy, like Iraq was sharing with you. I'm a good guy. Why am I suffering? I don't abuse. I don't speak evil. You have to understand faith. Never think everything will be all right because you are nice. I'm taking to somewhere now. Guys, I mean, the guy is a nice guy. But he's still suffering. Like the man of God, Pastor Chris said many times, bad things happen to good people. You see, good guy, nice guy, very wonderful guy. Somebody that you, you will tell your daughter to marry. <laughs> the guy is so good, then bad things happen to him. People say, why? Sometimes you're in church, you see... A wonderful, especially wonderful guys, nice guys. They don't understand the message of faith. There's a difference between faith and faithfulness. You can be faithful and not have faith. Oh, are you here, somebody? He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you see me on the cross, crucified with Christ. He said, Nevertheless, I live. Yet not. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at it. I want you to look at the construction very well. It didn't say, I live by my faith in the Son of God. He didn't say, I live by my faith in the Son of God. He's, you're not living by your faith in the Son of God. He said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I'm living by, not my faith, Jesus' faith. Hallelujah. Jesus had faith that if he goes to the cross and he died for me, and I hear about it, and I believe it, I will become like him. That's the faith of the Son of God. He, 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 he has faith that if he goes to the cross, 
This is his faith. That this is Jesus' faith. I was not there. Jesus believed that if he goes to the cross and he died on the cross and he goes to hell for three days, that faith that made Jesus to go to hell, that faith that made Jesus go and defeat devil, that faith, Jesus Christ, so that if he's raised from the dead and 2,000 years later, I hear about that story and I believe it, then I will have the same life like him. I live by that faith. That faith that made Jesus to go to hell. That faith that made him to be crucified. That faith that made him to defeat devil. He says, son, live by my faith. Why? Jesus saw a treasure in me. Let me tell you. I mean, many of you have been in meeting when we have this kind of meeting. When we have this kind of meeting, what just happened here? God has raised giants. I'm telling you now. So make sure you look at the guy beside you very well. Get to know his face. <laughs> God has established so many of you. Many of you here, you have the largest church in the country. It, it, can, it cannot be stopped. Did I talk like this when you were teenagers? When, you, when I have this kind of meeting? When, I, when this priest is moving like this, I'm telling you what he's doing. You are going to not just be the pastor of the largest church in the country. You'll be the richest. I'm talking to you now. You'll be what? The richest. It cannot be stopped. What the Lord just did here. Lift your hand before the Lord. It cannot be stopped. What the Lord just did here. It cannot be stopped. It can't. See? The grace is given. There are many of you here that the Lord told me that tonight is a night of all grace. So whatever grace, and the window is open now, if the window is open now, whatever grace you want to see, you want to have, you want to display, remember the one, the perfect law of liberty. Liberty to be anything. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Whatever grace you want, receive it right now. Begin to talk. Speak now, begin to speak. Whatever grace, it's a night of all grace. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Wherever you are watching, anywhere you are watching, it's a night of all grace. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a field you want to enter, and they have locked it up. They said nobody else can enter. Now, collect the grace to enter. Collect the grace to enter that field, to enter that business. It's a night of all grace. It's a night of all grace. All of you on the gallery, the third gallery, or the second gallery, all of you on the topmost gallery, lift your hand now. Be speaking in tongues. Angels are everywhere. The angels of God are everywhere in this place. Receive that grace now. All grace is available tonight. You want the grace? To start a business you want a grace to open a business in another country the grace is there the grace is there speak in tongues speak in tongues speak in tongues speak in tongues don't look around don't look at who is speaking face your home There's grace for you. There's grace for you. There's grace for you. There's grace for you. There is grace for you. Receive it. Worship him now. Oh, thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Leave by worship him now. Worship him now. Thank him. Worship him. Worship him. Don't look around. Don't look around. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Malaka basata labai. Malaka basata labai. Oh, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues.
you may be seated it has to be so oh thank you holy spirit romans 8 verse 1 are you glad that you are here tonight The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. No condemnation. No judgment. What condemnation has many synonyms? No judgment. No failure. Is that God is telling the truth or is lying to us? Because this is, a, this is an amazing statement. I mean, we live in a world full of evil, a world full of pain, and then God is telling us that <laughs> if you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. No condemnation, no judgment, no destruction, no failure. Why should a Christian fail? What's making a Christian to fail? I can never fail in life. Because he's looking at the wrong things. He said no judgment, no condemnation, no destruction, no defeat. You can't defeat a Christian. But he told us the, 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 the Christian that cannot be defeated. He said to them, to them, not everybody, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after their senses. He's not following the five senses. That there is no money in your pocket doesn't mean you are broke. That is the definition of the world. The world says if there's no money in your pocket, if there's no money in your account, you are a nobody. But not in our kingdom. God said, Moses, tell the children of Israel, by this time tomorrow, they will eat. They will so eat meat that it will come out of their nose. Moses said, God, these guys are hungry guys. They've not eaten meat for many years. Say, God, let me tell you, I have 600,000 soldiers. Don't let us talk about other young people, young boys. These are soldiers. And soldiers, when they take meat, they don't know how to stop. So <laughs> Moses began to tell God, God said, Moses, are you saying that God cannot furnish a table in the wilderness? He said, okay, tell them not to eat. They should start fasting. By this time tomorrow, he said, God said they will not only eat meat tomorrow, one week. He said, For the next one month, they will have meat non stop, but they were in the wilderness. Moses looked around, Where will the meat come from? God said, You will not know. The Bible said, The next day, a breeze came. People thought, Maybe it wants to rain. And suddenly, big quails, birds, they fell all came to the camp and covered the clouds. The whole camp became dark. People were hearing noise. The birds came and landed <coughs> in the camp, where she of Israel camp. And the Bible says, one day's journey on every side birds were everywhere five foot or five feet they were landing on themselves five feet nobody was in a hurry they came to be killed <laughs> they came to be eating you don't need to do anything lift your hand before the lord money is coming to you like that money is you know you know when we say things like this people say how, how can this be How can this be? <laughs> last year, I won't tell you what I've done this year. Last year, I was given $10,000 every day for 30 days. I didn't break it. 
Every day. Ten, 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 ten thousand dollars. Something triggered money to come. It, it's called the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life is the law of life. It's not just a, it's not just a law. It's the law of life. So the Bible calls it the spirit of life. It brings life into everything. But when, when, when God's people are not taught, they are praying for things that they should not pray for. Verse, verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after their senses, but they walk after the Spirit. That means they speak according to the Spirit. You will never say you are broke because there is no money. You are walking after the senses. He said, the people that dwell there shall not say, I am sick. You are walking after the senses because you are shaking. He said, you are sick. He said, anyone that walk according to the senses will face condemnation. Why? Because of verse 2. Why? Verse 2 says, for, for, that means verse 1 depends on verse 2. Verse 2 is the reason why verse 1 will work. He said, for there, there is a law. That means there is a principle. There is a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He said, that law at past tense, made, not shall make us free, nor will make us free, not soon and very soon will be free. From the law of sin, sin and all the consequences of sin, death and all his junior brothers, <laughs> All his cousins, the law of the spirit of life had made us free from them. Why? God, is when you become a Christian, you no longer live by the senses. God doesn't want you to focus on the outward appearance of your life. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Let's begin to flow. The spirit of God is moving here. Verse 16, 2 Corinthians 4. He said, for which cause we faint not. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, the senses, the outward man, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. Next verse. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Next verse. He says, Why we look not, oh, glory to God. See, looking principle again. Why we look not at what? At the things which are seen. We don't look at the things which you can see. I can see that my house, there's nothing inside there. I can see that I don't even have a car. I don't look at it. Somebody can say, oh, this brother is poor. That is his sight. Something is wrong with his eyes. I'm not using his eyes to look at myself. See, I can see myself. I can see the glory of God. I can see the grace of God. I can see that I'm not a failure. I can see that I'm not broke. I can see that I'm not sick. I can see. He said, why we look not? We don't look at the things that we can see, but at the things that we cannot see. Why? For the things that we can see are temporal. You will give it. You don't know what God just told me now. Eh? Tell me. God says, you will give it. Let me tell you what God just said. He said, I know he's talking to me. Mm -hmm. He said, I will give it. Because I gave him $10,000 every month. He said, I will give him a million dollars. I mean, every day, I will give him a million dollars every day. Oh, Note it down. You heard it, miss. I've said it. You have heard it. Note it down. You will testify that I said it. Every day, I will give you a million dollars. It can't be stopped. It has nothing to do with hard work. It has nothing to do with the company. Which company will pay you that money? They don't have it. Which company will give the children of Israel a bear to eat, they don't have it. Even if you bring all the factory together, they can, how long will they work? They'll be tired. But there's a law. Yes, sir. The law of the spirit of life. It multiplies everything. When that law is at work, it triggers prosperity. I want you to listen very well. It triggers prosperity. It triggers success. Nothing finished with you. How can money finish in your hand? It's a sin for money to finish in your hand. 
Ah, make sure you say, hey, tell everybody, say, never. Money can never finish in my hand. It is a sin before God. It is a sin that God will come to meet you and there's no money. Why? Let's look at one scripture like this. Let me digress a little bit. There's a law. Say there's a law. law. Tell your neighbor, say there's a law. Say there's a law at work in me. And there's a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Say that law is working in me right now. Deuteronomy 29. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 6. Deuteronomy 29, verse 1 to verse 6. Let's read. God is saying to the children of Israel, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Next verse. And Moses called unto all Israel, now I want to listen, and said unto them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, unto Pharaoh and to all his servants, Next verse. And unto all the great temptations. Come on now, let me read that. Thank you. I'm using this one. Unto the great temptations which thy eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet the Lord had not given you an heart. Oh, come on, follow me now. Yet the Lord had not given you an heart to perceive, an eyes to see, and to hear, ears to hear unto this day. They've been following God for a long time. Then he says, I have led you 40 years. This is what I want to see. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness, and your clothes are not waxing old upon you. The same cloth they wore out of Egypt 40 years ago is what they are still wearing. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus gives you a spiritual lifetime warranty. Oh, come on now. If you buy a wristwatch, they say they give you three years warranty. That means from now to the next three years, if there's anything that's wrong with it, you can bring it back. Some even give you ring. They will say they give you lifetime warranty for ring because they know ring, nothing will happen to ring. You know? But look at what God did to these people. He said, Moses is telling them, and I've led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and your shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. This is a major miracle. Moses mentioned all the miracles that God did in wilderness for them. He said God did great and mighty miracles. God did wonderful miracles. But he wanted to pick the one that blew up every miracle. Their clothes. As the guy was growing, the cloth was growing. <laughs> Understand what's going on? As the guy was growing, he would wake up in the morning and wear the cloth, it would fit him. He started wearing the cloth at the age of two. He's now 45. The cloth is he wearing. Ah. Moses said, listen, look at what God did for you. He did many wondrous things, many mighty things, many miraculous things. He said, but remember your cloth. Which shopping mall was in the wilderness? There was no shopping mall. Who, who, who wants to sell cloth for to six million Jews? It's not like today where they have factories. Who wants to sell clothes for them? Nobody even wants them. They want to kill them. There was a time they were passing through a place. They refused to give them water and drink. They did refuse to give them because they were coming to take over their land. How can you sell cloth to your enemies? So the Bible says here, your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and, and the shoe is not waxing old upon your foot. The guy started with size three at the age of two. At the age of 25, he's wearing size 11, the same shoe. The shoe never worn out. These guys were walking. In the wilderness. I mean, you know, remember some of your friends, not you now, some of your friends in school, they've used the shoe. Next time you see it, it's like, it's like Alibaba and the 40 tips. <laughs> the shoe. It has open mouth like this, like a keno. <laughs> this guy has this guy been wearing the same shoe, the same shoe, for 40 years. You think the shoe did not become old? Every day it was always new. Every day they wear it brand new. Moses said, this is an astounding thing that God did for you. Next verse. It's not true. And you have not eaten bread, neither have you drink wine or strong drink, that you might know that I am the Lord your God. They, they didn't even eat the same food every day. Every morning, God bring fresh food. 
Every money. There are things that God has done for us. They are lifetime warranty. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus will ensure that nothing gets old with you. <laughs> nothing finishes with you. Nothing gets dry up with you. That's why when the spirit of life is working in the man's life, you get to his house, his TV will look new. Meanwhile, he has bought it five years ago. His house will look clean. His cloth will look new. People will say, ah, this cloth is so fine. When did you buy it? You say, ah, I bought it seven years ago. Seven years ago? What, what happened? Are you not watching it? You say, I, I don't know. It's just, why? The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That spirit is working in your life. Nothing will get destroyed with you. Nothing will get old with you. Nothing will get broken with you. Am I communicating to somebody here? It's the law of life. It's the spirit of life. He did it with children of Israel. Now we have a better covenant. Now we belong to a better blessing. Hallelujah. So when you look at yourself, don't say I'm getting old. Hey, are you with me? Don't say I'm getting old. Don't look at you and say, Kai, look at me, I'm old though. No, we don't get old. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Say, I don't get old. Don't get old. The problem with any Christian is that they start looking old. They start dressing old. They start behaving old. They start talking old. They say, are you a kid? Don't stop talking like a kid. Uh -uh. Your children are here. And the madam and the father will organize themselves. Okay, boys, you boys, you come here now. They are practicing how to be old. <laughs> Many of you have been practicing how to be old. That's why you are looking old. So I'm no longer a kid. This, these boys are not my mates. You now start talking. Um, all of you children, come forward. Come forward. All of you children, come forward. And they all come because they know you are older than them. Mr. Old Man is calling us. And say, have you gone to, are, we, are we all going to church today? Let us all go to church and worship the Lord. He's talking old. He's practicing old. He's practicing looking old. Some of you have changed your cloth. You are now wearing old looking cloth. Now you are old. Wow. Mommy is old. Mommy has changed her cloth to old people's clothes. Once you show her, ah, welcome, mommy. Old looking mommy. He's a Christian. He's going to die. She's going to die. That's what is killing them. I might say, I might say you should look like a, or dress like anyhow. No. But don't look old. The yes. Bible says your youth is renewed like an eagle. Don't practice old man's life. Be joyful. Young people are joyful. Be full of life. Be full of joy. Look forward, look forward. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your, your, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall what? Shall dream dreams. Start dreaming the things you will do. Don't say my, my prayers to my children to make it in life. In, in Joshua chapter 13, verse 1, God came to meet Joshua. He said, Joshua, now you are old, and there remains much land for you. Joshua is old. God said, oh, you are old. Can you imagine God calling somebody old? So who is God? <laughs> he said, you are old. God couldn't use him again. He said, now Joshua was old. And striking in years, he's showing all over him. And he died at 110. Meanwhile, Moses died at 120. And he refused to die. God has to tell him to go and die. Moses said, I'm not dying. God said, go and die. <laughs> Moses said, go, oh, God, I want to see the promised life. God said, Moses, don't say it again. Go up to the mountain and die. <laughs> the guy doesn't want to die. He went and, and he died. <laughs> I refuse to die. I refuse to die. So I'm getting younger every day. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He's at work in me. He's at work in me. He doesn't allow anything to be old. He doesn't allow anything to be weak. He doesn't allow anything to lose value. He doesn't allow anything to become nothing. So, Paul says, why we look not at the things we can see? 
Don't look at your certificate. Don't look at your age. So how old are you today? 55. Aye, 55. Hi. One of my staff was talking long ago, was talking to Pastor Lisa. He said, you know, we were calling somebody to do something in church. He said, Pastor, that, that man is a old man. No? Pastor Lisa asked her, how, how old is he? He said, 34. <laughs> She's comparing her age with the man. He said, man is, that man is old. But now she, she has passed 34 now. She too. Is she now old? Don't call anybody old. And don't accept it. There's a law at work in my life. When you see your parents, don't say, old mama, you have killed the mama there. Don't call your parent old mama. Don't call him old papi. Don't call your papi. <laughs> don't transfer life. Then man not die, not start crying. You kill him. <laughs> don't call your papa old papa. Old daddy. You think you are joking. You are transferring death into him. No. Transfer the spirit of life. Because you are walking by the senses. You are looking at his gray hair. You are looking at his age. Every decision, the reason why you are talking is because of your senses. The man is old. See gray hair. He can't walk straight. Aye. He will soon die. I should start, start, I should start saving money now. Barrier. <laughs> the first social pastor, I went to console a woman that her father died. She was crying, crying, crying. I said, Lord, what will I do? I said, sorry, sorry. Pastor, leave me alone. Don't go, leave me alone. I said, sorry, you're okay. No, I'm not crying because he died. <laughs> Why are you not crying? I don't have money to bury. <laughs> he was, she was crying because, not because her father died, because of the money to bury the man. She was crying. I said, is that the problem? I said, yes, Pastor. That's the reason I'm crying. I'm crying. No money. Why should he die at this time? He can die, but not now. <laughs> Your dad will live long. Yeah. Your mom will live long. Yeah. Say, 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 say. Yes. They will go with the rapture of the church. There's a law as working in your home. As the law of the spirit of life. He's working in your TV. He's working on your share. He's walking in your place. You know some people they are with you, they, are, they keep breaking plates. Everything bang, bam. They break. I said, don't come to my house again. Why? Oh, why? Carry cup. Pa. Sorry, Pastor. Sorry. You will pay. Ah, my office will pay. No, they pay. You break anything, you pay. <laughs> Nineteen ninety. 93, 1993, 1992. When Pastor Chris minister like this, ah, I will run in the hall like this. I'll be full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, shall we pursue me? <laughs> <laughs> we are many like that. It's like a competition in the church. I will take off under the anointing. Oh, shall we pursue us and grab us? Ah! <laughs> They will fall like this. It's like a competition. I was one of them. I know myself. <laughs> when we are praying, we'll, we'll be moving around the circle like this, scattering the chair. Hi. Pastor will be looking at all of us. We're breaking shares in the church anyhow. <laughs> the competition is how many shares you broke today. <laughs> so, one day, Pastor came. It's okay. Today's service, let me tell you, once you break share, you are paying. <laughs> so all of us, since we don't have money to pay, <laughs> once you want to fall, you look careful. <laughs> you, <coughs> you look with one high. So you land on the floor, not on the chair. If you break share, you are paying. That's how God saved the shares from all of us. Praise the Lord. When the law of the spirit of life is at work in you, your car will not be breaking down the road. <laughs> Are you seeing here, somebody? I'm bringing it down to you 
to let you know what that law is for. It's not just for speaking in tongues. It works in everything. Everything. If that car is going to break down, it will have been telling you, don't drive out, don't go out, park your car. Don't go with this car today. Call mechanic, but you won't listen. He'll be giving you a signal. <coughs> He's telling you, the Lord, the Spirit of life is warning you. Park the car, but you won't listen. So, everything concerning me is alive. Nothing is destroyed in my hands. I don't lose things. I don't destroy things. Everything is, is active. Everything is in perfect condition. I mean, you get to some people's house. There's peace. Curtains, everything. Even mosquitoes fly gently. You know? They respect the house. Mosquitoes just be going. They look at you. They say, no. They fly out. But there's a law at work. They recognize Daniel and they kept quiet. Lions, they recognize. It's the law of the spirit of life. It's the law of the spirit of life. Daniel's thrown into lions then. That law kept their mouth shut. He said there is no condemnation. Understand it. There is no destruction. There is no judgment. There is no failure. You understand? There is no defeat. Nothing can condemn this guy. Nothing. To them that walk according to the spirit. When that law is working, your faith is on another level. The next one, Romans 3. They gave you something. You say you can't find it. They gave you money. You can't find it. They gave you to go and sell something. We started looking for you. We're not even looking for the thing we ask you to sell. It's you we are not looking for. What, is, what kind of life that? And he said, Christian. He said, Pastor, I don't know the demon troubling me. The, it's not a demon troubling you. Activate the law of the spirit of life. And what do you do? You say it every day. Every time. Many of us that have been long time Christian, this, this scripture has been there in the Bible, but we, we, we were doing it when we were uh, uh, growing up as a, as a Christian. Then, and I'm talking to many of you on that worship. And then suddenly we stop it. Because now we we'll come to church, we want more revelation, more rema. And the more we listen to rema, revelation, the more we move away from the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This is the law that we live by. Paul said there's no condemnation. No condemnation. The guy will never fail. The guy can never be poor. You can't, the guy cannot lose money. Money cannot finish in his hands. The law multiplies it make you productive, make you successful, make you fruitful. It's a law. It's working. You don't need to pray about it. It's working. If I step out now, money follow me. When I step in now, money follow me. That's what God said to the children of Israel. He said, you are blessing. You're going out. You are blessing. You're coming in. You don't just receive money when you go out. When you come in also, money is waiting. He said, you are, you are blessing. You're going out. Many people talk about going out. Oh, I'm coming in. He said, you are blessing the house. You are blessing the field. Even when I'm sleeping, money comes. Say it. Well, I'm blessed everywhere. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in the house. I'm blessed on the road. I'm blessed in the car. I'm blessed everywhere. I'm so blessed. Fully blessed. Hi. Tell neighbor, say, Kai. Okay, let's go there. Romans, I've been trying to enter this place. This, this is the real deal. This is it. If your faith is going to shake the world, this is where we are going. <laughs> Romans 3, verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, is righteousness. That Jesus might be, that God might be just, God might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Say, God is my justifier. God is my justifier. Say, Jesus is my justifier. Jesus is my justifier. Look at what it says. To declare, I say at this time, is righteousness. 
God wants to declare that he is righteous. So what does he do? The Bible says that God himself might be just. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Before Jesus came, everybody was called a sinner. Why? Because of what Adam did. I was not in the garden. Maybe if it is beyond an if. <laughs> but maybe I, will have, maybe, I, maybe I will have saved the human race. It was Adam. Adam and Eve. Adam did something wrong. And death passed to all men. I didn't do anything wrong. So death passed, sin and death passed to all men as a free gift. <laughs> you don't need to do anything. Once you are born like this, crying, a sinner. <laughs> when a child is born, he's born a sinner. Except he's born through a Christian. So before Jesus came, that is a sinner. And God is sending that child to hell. He's going to hell. The child didn't do anything. That's why it's important you must be born again. Someone said, what will happen to children that died that their parents were not born again? They will go to where their parents are going. It's a nature thing. And then, Jesus came and fulfilled the demand of justice. Bible said, he who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus came and fulfilled all the demand of righteousness. So, brother, let me have you. Come on, thank you. Just a small, so come to. Okay. Maybe I should get. You, are, you, are, you look like Jesus, you are tall. You also look like Jesus, but Adam part. <laughs> okay, look at it. Okay, come. Okay, move backwards a little bit. All right, thank you. You stay. Stay in front of him. These are powerful pastors. Though. Richmond. Richmond's birthday was yesterday. His birthday was yesterday. I hope you bought him, you gave him gift. You are not shouting again. <laughs> yesterday was his birthday. Okay, this is uh, Adam. For today. Adam did something wrong. He's seen. These are People, men, and sin pass to Adam, free. This guy, whether it's good or bad, makes no difference. Make sure, make sure you follow me now. No matter how good his work, no matter how kind he is, he's still going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because of Adam. Sin passed to all men. He gave me a free gift. It doesn't matter what he's doing. This is Jesus. The second and last Adam. He became righteous. And all those who believe in him, righteousness passed to them, whether they are good or bad. He became a gift. So, if this guy good work cannot make him righteous, mm, mm. this guy bad work cannot make him unrighteous. Ah! The Bible says, for God to be a just God, for him to be a just God, since he made this guy a sinner without choice. Then, when the second Adam comes, he made this guy righteous without anything. So as bad as he is, he cannot be unrighteous. As good as he is, he cannot be righteous. The difference is Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, you receive the free gift of righteousness. If you stay with Adam, you receive the free gift <laughs> of sin. Thank you. <laughs> So let's go back to verse 26. So when you begin to understand the life of faith, this is where many people make the mistake about faith. 
So to declare and say at this time, God's righteousness, that God might be just. He might be a just God. Why? Because Adam sinned, and all of us that didn't, were not in the garden, and we behave better than Adam, were still condemned. So for him to be a just God, he become the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. That is so important. See? In the life of faith, understand something as I read. Don't think you'll be successful because of your good behavior. I want you to listen again. Don't think you'll be successful. Somebody said, well, in the last three weeks, I've not done anything wrong. So I will get a miracle. No, 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 no. Don't think you'll be successful because you've not done anything wrong. Many people think, oh, I'm a nice guy. I'm a good guy, like Iraq was sharing with you. I'm a good guy. Why am I suffering? I don't abuse. I don't speak evil. You have to understand faith. Never think everything will be all right because you are nice. I'm taking to somewhere now. Guys, I mean, the guy is a nice guy. But he's still suffering. Like the man of God, Pastor Chris said many times, bad things happen to good people. You see, good guy, nice guy, very wonderful guy. Somebody that you, you will tell your daughter to marry. <laughs> the guy is so good, then bad things happen to him. People say, why? Sometimes you are in church, you see, a wonderful, especially wonderful guys, nice guys. They don't understand the message of faith. There's a difference between faith and faithfulness. You can be faithful and not have faith. Faithfulness is lawyer, a lawyer brother, your lawyer usher. He's committed to you, but no, no faith in him. But everybody sitting around in church. He's the head usher, he's the head choir, he's the head everything. But not, not the nothing inside him. We'll get there. So, in the life of faith, don't think everything will be all right because you are nice. Don't think everything will be all right because you be, your behavior is good. Those are not the things for faith. Let's read verse 27. This is where we're going. Verse 27. He said, where is boasting then? He said, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. He said, but by the law of faith. The third law is the law of faith. The law of faith. In the law of faith, listen now, this is where many ministers miss it. In the law of faith, your, your good works are not necessary. Remember a law? The law of gravity, you don't need to do anything. If I drop this thing down, what comes? It comes down. It will come down. It's a law. It's a principle. In the law of faith, many Christians, many good Christians are having a bad time because they think being nice will make them to prosper. So, this is a nice brother, a nice sister, but can't afford to do two, two copies of rhapsody. He can't give because he thinks. Then you see one rough guy like this. One rough guy just come and say, hello, pastor. And then he drops 3,000 3, copies. And he comes and says, good day, pastor. Good afternoon, pastor. Good evening, pastor. He, I mean, he, he, he's greeting pastor morning, noon, and night. Pastor, you are wonderful. You are my life coach. You are my teacher. You are my father. You can see all those things and see not do three copies of Rhapsody. Pastor, I love you so much. I love you. Without you, there's nothing. My life is nothing. Without you, you are my best. You are my this. You are my that. Well done. Nice guy. Speak well of his pastor, but he's still broke. Why? There's a law that is not activating. Don't think being nice will make you rich. I'm not saying being bad will make you rich as well. No. <laughs> understand the life of faith. Can we go there now? Praise God. So, you have to understand that faith is the key, the law of faith. Let's read again. Look at, he said, where is boasting? Say, where is boasting? He said, it is excluded. So, there's no boasting. You can't boast that you have been so nice. Like somebody will stand in front of me and say, Pastor, I want to see you. I said, what is it? He said, Pastor, I've been fasting for three weeks. So I want you to pray for me. I said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I've been fasting for three weeks. I've been eating for three weeks. 
You want to, you, you don't want to come and boast in front of me. Pastor, I've been fasting for three weeks. I'm sorry, I have been eating for three weeks. I should pray for you now. Because you are not coming with the right attitude. You want to boast. That's the problem with young people sometimes. They are boasting, huh, Pastor? We pray 12 hours. Shatalakaba. <laughs> 12 hours non stop, Pastor. After you prayed 12 hours three years ago, what has happened to your finances? It was still in the same spot. In fact, it has even become worse. Because there is no boasting. He said, Where is boasting? There. He said, It is excluded. So, there are many things you do that is boasting, and that's why the next result didn't show up. He said, It is excluded. By what law? Will that righteousness be given to you by works? He said, no. Say, my life is not by works. My life is not by works. We try to work many things too much. You want to get a job, you declare three weeks fasting. What kind of a life is that? <laughs> this is what they are teaching them in churches. You want anything, it must be fast. Your life has only been fasting. What is your problem? And you feel good. You feel good. I have paid the price. I have paid the price. That means you are telling God, I'm warning you. I have paid the price. Why are you delaying? I have paid. So young people, you have to be careful of that. You have to be very careful. You know? So you come out and say, what happened here? I've been, I've been, I've been on the mountain. Who sent you to the mountain? Not the mountain. What are you doing on the mountain? I will never lose a meal for the devil. Yes, sir. Lift up your hands and say, I will never lose a meal for the devil. No, 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 no. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. When it comes to message of faith, a life of great faith, no boasting. Once you start boasting, you know that you are not getting it. You're not going to get it. You are, you are back to Adam. By what law? Of works? He said, no. Oh, glory to God. Let's look at Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20. Let's see what's going on here. Hallelujah. Galatians 2 verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Say with me. Lift up your right hand before the Lord. Say, I'm crucified with Christ. Say, nevertheless, I live. Say, yet not I. Ah, you are not saying it very well. Say, yet not I. When you see me like this, I'm not the one. Somebody is living in me. Yes. Oh, are you here, somebody? Yes. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you see me on the cross, crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at it there. I want you to look at the construction very well. It didn't say, I live by my faith in the Son of God. It didn't say, I live by my faith in the Son of God. You're not living by your faith in the Son of God. It said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I'm living by, not my faith, Jesus' faith. Jesus had faith that if he goes to the cross and he died for me and I hear about it and I believe it, I will become like him. That's the faith of the Son of God. He, 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 he has faith that if he goes to the cross, this is his faith, that this is Jesus' faith. I was not there. Jesus believed that if he goes to the cross and he died on the cross and he goes to hell for three days, that faith that made Jesus to go to hell, that faith that made Jesus go and defeat devil, that faith, Jesus Christ, so that if he's raised from the dead and 2,000 years later, I hear about that story and I believe it, then I will have the same life like him. I live by that faith. That faith that made Jesus to go to hell. That faith that made him to be crucified. That faith that made him to defeat devil. He says, son, live by my faith. Why? Jesus saw a treasure in me. 
The Bible said he saw a treasure in the field. And what happened? And the Bible said he went and saw everything that he has and bought the treasure in the field. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in Hetim Vessel. He saw a treasure. He saw me. He saw me 2,000 years ago. He saw Pastor Bill Lara coming on the scene 2,000 years ago. He said, if I die for him now, when he come on the scene, he will reign in life. So, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. I'm living, understand the life of faith. The man that said to Jesus, he said, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Because he, he knows who Jesus is. The man doesn't even read the Bible. He's a centurion man. He's not even a Jew. He had faith in Jesus. The faith of Jesus Christ. That faith that Jesus has, that somebody that is forgotten in this life, if that person hear about him and believe in him, that person's life will be transformed. I live by that faith. Every day, wake up and say it. Don't live by your faith. Of, don't, are you listening to me? Don't live by faith. Live by the faith of the Son of God. Jesus is in heaven. You know what he's doing? He's the high priest of the church. The Bible says in Hebrew 3 verse 1, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the apostle and the high priest of my confession. He's using my word to do something. He just wants me to keep talking. I'm supposed to be talking. My job is to talk. My job is talking. His job is to use it. I don't need any faith. I need his faith. So when you come to mention your faith, you see many Christians struggling to have faith. Struggling to have faith. Stop struggling. He has finished it. Live by his faith. Live by faith. He said, I will send you another comforter. He said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because they see it in none, neither know it him. He said, but you shall know him, for he shall be in you, and shall be with you. He said, when the Holy Spirit shall come, when the comforter shall come, he shall show you all things. He shall teach you things to come. That faith that Jesus had to send me the Holy Ghost, I have, I live by that faith. Oh, are you with me, somebody? So we live by the faith of the Son of God. The law of faith means you are, the law of gravity. Do you do anything about it? No. I'm, I'm using the law of gravity to explain this law to you. When you come to law, you don't do anything about it. The law is there. Just activate it. You are going and say, I'm crucified with Christ. You are going for a job interview. You say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. Say, say yet not I. Say, yet not I. He said, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in this body, I live by what? By the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Oh, you say it many times. You say it on the road. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It doesn't matter whether I have faith or not. It doesn't matter. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It doesn't matter whether my faith is weak or not weak. I live by the faith of the Son of God. In Matthew chapter 17, a man took his son his son has epilepsy spirit. He took him to his disciple. The disciple could not cast him out. Suddenly, Jesus came. He ran to Jesus. Jesus said, what's the problem? He said, I brought my, my, my son, tormented by a lunatic spirit, and your, 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 your disciple could not cast, him out, cast them out. Oh, Jesus Christ said, oh, you have little faith. He said, where is the boy? He brought the boy to Jesus. Jesus Christ said, how long has this thing been on this child? On this boy, he said, from a child, he will tear him, he will foam. Jesus Christ looked at him and said, do you believe that I am, I am able to do it, not you? Me. The man said, please, help that my own belief. The man did not even believe. He said, that, he said no problem. He looked at the devil, he said, come out of the boy. And the demon left the boy instantly. Whose faith is that? The faith of Jesus. In the law of faith, live by his faith. There are things that he has done for us. Don't think you will be perfect because you have done something right. Live by the faith of the Son of God. Paul, Paul, you know, leverage his life on it. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. There is no boasting. All of us can be millionaire tonight. There is no boasting. No, but not of works. Not of works. Don't think you have to do so many things. Your friend might have done many things. Your colleague might have done many things. Your grandfather must have done many things. Your great-grandfather, they said they labor in your family. That is their story. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. 
I fly on the feet of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I live by his faith. When I enter the airplane, I live by his faith. When I enter the car, I live by his faith. I live by, tell him, say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Oh, come on now. We are moving. We are moving. Something is cooking here. Hallelujah. 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 Tell me, boy. Say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The first one, the perfect law of liberty. You don't have anything to do, just keep looking. The second one, the law of the spirit of life. Everything about you has life. The third one, the law of faith. Whose faith? The faith of the Son of God. I live by that faith. That's why you can't defeat me. Why? <laughs> you think I'm weak. The Bible says when we are weak, that is when we are strong. When we look so weak, when we look so helpless, Holy Ghost does not come to you when you can help yourself. Oh, come on now, rewind. Didn't get it. Holy Ghost help the helpless. That's why it's called the helper. See, since you can do it by yourself, you don't need the, you don't need the Holy Ghost. But when you get to the point where you don't know what to do, what you don't know what to, where to go, then the Holy Spirit of God, He comes to help. He is the helper. He is the comforter. He is the advocate. He is the intercessor. He is the there. He is the one to instruct you, to guide you. To, sometimes, we pastor, sometimes you don't feel like preaching. You don't feel like preaching. You, you pray, you know, no power, nothing. You say, I live by the faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who called me to be a pastor? You carry your Bible. I live by the faith of the Son of God. You are walking to the hall. There's nothing in your head. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who gave himself for me? You walk into the auditorium. I live by the faith of the sons of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 5. By the time you are through with the service, the blind has received their sight. The lame has won. Everybody is hailing. Hey, mighty pastor. Mighty pastor. Supernatural pastor. But you know yourself. You, you, you tip two hearts again. Say, Lord, thank you for not embarrassing me today. I live by the faith of the sons of God. Lift up your head before the Lord. Say, I live. Say, I live. Oh, tell your neighbor. Say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by his faith. He has faith in me. He, but that's why he died. He has faith in me. He, be, he knows that if he die for me, I will prosper. He knows if he die for me, I will not be sick. All he wants me to do is to believe. I believe. I live by that faith. I am what God says I am. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Oh, tell your neighbor, say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Say, I, say, I live by the faith. So, life is a law. Faith is a law. Faith is a law. Now, that scripture, to better understand Romans 3, verse 7, let's go to Romans 10, verse 6. How does faith work? I think today, because of what God did, we're taking more time. Romans 10, verse 6. Oh, oh, I thank God for my pastor, Pastor Chris, that taught me all these things. My God and my Lord, where will I be? Have I been afraid like every other person? Very fearful. There's no fear in me. Take my body, you won't find a piece of fear. When I was transferred to Ghana, we, had, we finished the meeting, I entered play. I've told you this testimony many times. I entered aeroplane to go back to my uh, city that I was pastoring, Kano State, to pick up my passport and fly, back, and fly to Ghana to resume. As we entered the plane, one hour, 15 minutes flight. 30 minutes into the flight, I was the last person to enter. I saw the pilot coming out. I was sitting at the back at that time. The grace was for economic class. I was sitting at the back of the plane. The pilot came out from the back. He went to the back. Went back to the front. Then he announced. He said, uh, <clears throat> hello. We will say, we were, nobody responded. He said, we're having some challenges with the hydraulic system of the plane. Uh -huh. Everybody is most open. You know, inside the plane. Even inside bus. Now, you mean you can tell the driver to park, let me drop. <laughs> Yeah, 
Inside play, where will you park? Huh? He says, the hydraulic system of the plane is faulty and that the plane will not be able to land in Kano Airport. Kano Airport does not have the facility to stop the plane. Ah, huh? said the plane. So we are going to return back to Lagos. Of course, you know what is happening in the plane now. Huh? No, it's crying. You know, everybody that that subcommittee seen began to ask for God. <laughs> Final day on earth. Hi, I was just posted to Ghana. I've not even entered Ghana. <laughs> Dev was already hungry. I was sitting at the back. I remember the teachings of my pastor. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. With that in my spirit, I did like this. I was sitting. I did like this. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Hey. Talking about great faith. If I had to write our report here today, Paul was in shipwreck, I was in plane crash. You see, I'm not just in Ghana for nothing. I, <laughs> the people didn't want me to enter. But I'll be healed. We landed Lagos. The plane crash landed. The wind collapsed. We ran into the bush. I was it. I came out. The plane refused to explode. I came. My pastor called me at the airport. You know, I just said on the news, the plane crashed. How are you? I said, Pastor, perfect. If you listen to the message, men's rally. You see, Pastor talking about you there. He didn't mention my name. I was the one. The plane crash. You have to get ready. That's why this message, this program has come to you now. Don't be looking for faith. Live by the faith of the Son of God. When trouble shows up, don't say, I didn't read my rhapsody this morning. I didn't read my Bible this morning. I didn't pray in tongue long enough. No. Live by the faith of the Son of God. By the faith. Say, ah, I wish I prayed long enough. Many pastors have taught us that we need to pray long enough before, the, before things can happen. Mm -mm. I know I will tell you when we come to prayer, I will tell you why we pray long enough. Not because of things will happen. We live by the faith of the Son of God. See, we live by the faith of the Son of God. I pray in tongues for hours. But when I finish, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. Why? If I don't do that, that's verse 20, Galatians 2, verse 20. In verse 21, he said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. When you start living by your own effort, you will frustrate the grace of God. But when you live by the faith of the Son of God, he said, I do not frustrate. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, there are Christians who ask grace, but they are frustrating it. They are frustrated because they want to live by their effort. He said, of works? No. So, when you are praying in tongues as young people, don't think you get result because you pray in tongues. That's not the purpose of praying in tongues. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. He said, I bet in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edify himself. That is the purpose of speaking in tongue. Charge himself, build himself, so that you can say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You build yourself against every thought that says you are living by your works. You build yourself in the place of tongue, so that you will not consider the senses. When challenges come your way, you respond spiritually. There are many prayer warriors in this city. Prayer warriors. And I don't know why they are warring in prayers. Prayer warriors. They, are, they say they are prayer warriors. And then when they finish praying, they, they go to the people's house and finish their food. They are prayer warriors. Say so we have prayed, madam. Settle us. No. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Lift your beautiful hand before the Lord. Say, I live by the faith of the Son of God. This is so, this is so important. What I'm showing you now is so important. 
Because many times young people want to feel big, feel proud. I've achieved a lot. You don't achieve anything. This is the achievement. Don't think you have done anything. Jesus did it. So Jesus is in your mouth. You talk about him. You tell people how much you love Jesus. He said, without me, you can do nothing. I'm not a great pastor because of my works. I'm a great pastor because of Jesus. What he did for me. He gave gift to men. He gave some apostles, some prophets. You didn't even make yourself pastor. He's the one that made you pastor. <laughs> Do you understand? Jesus made you pastor. Let's enter some more levels. 7 Corinthians 4, verse 13. Tell your neighbor, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's when you talk like that, gospel. Eh? When David, you're David as well. When you talk like that, things will be working for you. You will take responsibility for your errors. When people go and report you to God, say, that brother, I have no problem with him. He's, not, he's living by my faith. People will accuse you and criticize you. Nothing shake your result because they don't know you don't live by your faith. <laughs> are you listening to me? They think you are, no, you are living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I do not frustrate the grace of God. That is the grace of God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. That was nothing. Okay, let's eat it on the head. Romans 10 again. I said Romans 10 verse 6. Oh, I love this. Romans 10 verse 6. Let's read. We'll close with that. Romans 10 verse 6. He said, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. The righteousness that Moses and the Lord brought is a doing righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus is a speaking righteousness. Let's read verse 5. Verse 5. Romans 10 verse 5. For Moses, look at it there. Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. The righteousness which is of the law. That the man which marked the world doeth those things shall live by them. And I'll explain that in the perfect law of liberty. But not to obey the law. Because this is the righteousness of Moses. It, until you do it, you cannot be righteous. But, verse 6, next verse. But the righteousness which is of faith, speak it. Not do it. So in our kingdom, it is a speaking kingdom. Not a doing kingdom. If you miss me like this, get a pillow and start sleeping. He speak it. He speak it. He speak it. Righteousness of Moses, he described it, he what? Do it. Righteousness of Jesus, speak it. On this wise, see what he's saying. This is righteousness of faith. He's speaking on this manner. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Don't say how it will happen. That's what he's saying. Don't say in your heart, I wish God is here to help me. Don't say, I wish Jesus Christ show himself to me. You know, like some ministers, they say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. And you know, because they've heard some other ministers say that Jesus appeared to them in their room. I say, Lord, until you appear to me in my room, you, are, you have not called me. Don't say it. Don't say, we will go to heaven and bring down Jesus Christ. Don't say it. Don't say how. Don't say how you will get the money. Don't think in your heart, how will the money come? Don't say it. How will I get the job? How will I get the money? He says, say not in your heart. Who will go to heaven and bring down Jesus? Or who will go to hell and bring him up? Verse, verse 8. But what said it? What is this righteousness saying? He said the word is where? It's nigh thee. The word is so close to you, it's in your heart and in your mouth. 
the money you need is not in heaven it's in your mouth can i say it again yes, sir. i say if you sleep from now you didn't attend this conference from day one the child you want is not with god it's in your mouth the business you want is not with god it's with your mouth that's the mistake many christians are making they are praying to god to receive something from god and they will never receive it because it's where in their mouth he said don't say in your heart who will go to heaven and bring jesus down or go to hell and bring him up to do what to do what he said the world that you are looking for is 90. he's so close to you he's so close that it's in your heart and in your mouth all the money you, would, you spend this year is in your mouth. So when we are praying and we're like, oh God, the devil do something. Wrong prayer. It's in my mouth. Lift up your hand, young man. Young man, young woman. Yeah. Lift up your hand. Where is, where is the money? In your mouth. When I say I'm going to give a million dollars, somebody will God approve it. He has approved it since. It's where? In my mouth. Talk more than you eat. <laughs> Talk more than you eat. The world is nigh thee in your mouth. Where is your future? In your mouth. Where is your husband? You're a, you're a man. <laughs> Where is your wife? In your... <laughs> Where is your wife? In your mouth. Stop moving by the senses. They're looking for a fine girl. <laughs> They're looking to come to church. Say, I love your air positive you church. Fine babes. He now come to church. He's not worshiping God. He's looking around. He's looking for a wife. You won't find. I say it in the name of Jesus. You will not find. You will not find the wife. In the name of Jesus, you will not see the sister. The wife is where? In your mouth. Where is your husband? In your mouth. <laughs> where is your wife? In your mouth. Eh? Those who walk not according to the senses. You are looking at and say, ah, I know what my life would be if I married Nana. I know how my life would be. You, she will not marry you. Yes, sir. The, the word is where? In your mouth. We will sin. The business is where? In my mouth. One billion dollar. Where is it? See, until you get there, you'll be praying dumb, dumb prayers. It has not worked since. You are still praying. I'm changing it now. It's in your mouth. He said, don't, don't say we'll go to heaven and bring Christ down. Don't say we'll go to hell and bring him up. He, says, he said, the righteousness of Moses, you have to do something to make it. You have to do something. You have to do something. He said, but the righteousness of faith is a speaking one. Don't say we'll go to heaven and bring down Christ. Don't say we'll go to hell and bring down, bring up Christ for you. He said, where is the word? He said, the word is so close. It's in your heart and in your mouth. Every money you spend this year is not with God, it's in your mouth. You start talking. You wake up in the morning and start talking. You sleep too much. You wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning, 5 a.m., you start talking. You speak in tongues so that you can talk. You speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you activate your spirit. So you won't talk like a man. You activate your spirit. Then you begin to release the word. Release the word. You release your future. Release it. Release it. It's in your mouth. He said, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess, next verse, that if thou, this is the principle, if thou shalt confess, this is how you got born again, if thou shalt confess, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's how you receive eternal life. Your mouth and your heart. You wake up in the morning, you talk your world. You talk to your life. On the road, you are talking. You are driving your car, you are talking. You are a talking Christian. A talker. You are talking the world. You are call, you are, the world is 90. You speak your future. You speak it. Nothing can stop it. While you are here now, you are talking. Not that you are looking at me. 
As if we are in the cinema house, you are talking. As we are sitting down like you are breathing the world. You are breathing the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to open that shopping mall. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I will have that estate. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the and you keep talking. You keep talking. You keep talking. The word is nighty. I will continue tomorrow. Lift up your hands. The word is night. Stand on your feet. What is tomorrow like for you? Say it. The world is night. Lift up your hand. The world is night. Hallelujah. The world is night. We keep quiet too much. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand before the Lord. In the next two minutes, you start talking. I want you to talk your future. I want to say it. The, 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 the centurion man has to say something to Jesus. He, has, he, has to, he said, don't come. Don't come. Speak the word only. Jesus is waiting for you now. Speak. Lift up your hand. Speak your future. Listen. Before you talk. In the message of faith, you don't talk to God. You don't talk to God. You don't talk to God. Oh, God, give me car. That is not from God. You will not get it. In the message of faith, you speak. You speak. Jesus Christ said, if you shall say to this mountain, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, if you shall say to this mountain, not say to God, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and not doubt in your heart, but believe the things which you say shall come to pass. He said, you shall have what things ever you say. Law of faith. Speak. Don't say, God, please come down and help me. Don't say, Jesus Christ, rise from the dead and help me. He said, no, don't speak like that. He said, what does the word say? He said, the word is nighty, even in your heart and in your mouth. Lift up your hands now. The money is so close, it's in your mouth. The business is in your mouth. The baby, the pregnancy is in your mouth. You want to have a child? Say, Lord, I thank you today. I speak now in the name of Jesus. I have my twins. In the next nine months, <laughs> you start speaking. Don't look around now. Begin to speak. The word is in your mouth. All of you up the gallery, the word is in your mouth. The word is in your mouth. Lift your hand before the Lord. The word is in your mouth. Those of you on the board, speak now. Your members, where are your members? In your mouth. Pastors, speak now. Everything is in your mouth. You speak. You know, Isaiah says something. Isaiah 55 verse 10. He says, Isaiah 55 verse 10. He said, for as the rain coming down from heaven, for as the rain coming down and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but water the head, the rain, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So my word is like what? Like rain. Have you ever seen rain? Do you see it dropping once in a while? When it's rain, what's happening? Some rain can rain for seven days. Am I right? Some rain, they call it uh, in the other side, monsoon rain. They can rain for a whole week. They will flood your place. He said your word is like a rain. Some of you, your word is like a shower. You are talking like as if you are dropping shower. You know those rain that want to rain and stop raining. You just drop one word. You have not spoken for a whole day. It's like one drop of rain. Pam. But when he talk about rain, he said your word shall be like a rain. That means every damn pour. That means the word is pouring out regularly. The word is pour, he said like a rain. You talk more than you eat. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Where is the word? Your mouth. Where is the money? Where is the job? Where is the business? Where is your husband? Where is your wife? Where is your children? Where is your future? 
Now begin to shout out your future. Give the Lord a shout. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Begin to speak in tongues. I want you in the next two minutes release the word. Don't just speak in tongues. Speak in tongues and speak in your understanding. Lord, this is my future. I announce my future. I announce my... This is a place of confirmation today. All grace available here today. Announce your future. Don't look around. Don't play with it. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus, this is where I'm going. This is my future. I have the picture. I will not forget this picture. I release the word. The word is in my mouth. The word is in my heart. The word is in my mouth. The word is in my heart. The word is in my mouth. The law of faith. I live by that faith of Jesus Christ. I live by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who loved me and gave himself to me. I will not frustrate the grace of God. The grace of God is working for me now. Why? Because the word is in my heart and in my mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the world. I release the world concerning my business. Announce the amount your business will do this year. Announce the business. So I receive that contract, what five million dollars, what five million CDs. I receive that contract, what three million CDs. Begin to talk like that. I receive that business. I receive it. The word is in your mouth, it's not in heaven. The word is in your mouth. Speak. Wherever you are participating for now, speak. This is great faith convention. In faith, you don't talk to God. In faith, you don't look at God. He has done it. Hallelujah. In faith, the word is in your mouth and in your heart. Speak now. Speak. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speak. Speak. That job is in your mouth. That business is in your mouth. Maybe there is a company you want to go and apply for. It's in your mouth. Begin to speak. Testimonies everywhere. Testimonies everywhere. All of you on the side. Everything is in your mouth. Be speaking now. Be speaking. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't beg. Listen. Some of you are saying, oh God, give me this job. Don't say, God, give me something. Don't say, God, give me anything. That's not the word. The word is where? In your mouth. He has told you to talk. Be talking. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. I receive. I have. I have. I have. I have. Be saying it. I have the job. I have the business. I have the organization. I have the industry. I have it. Mention that factory. Mention the saloon. Uh, you want to open a saloon? I have that saloon. I have the saloon. Which location? East Legon. I have the saloon at East Legon. Be talking like that. The word is in your mouth. I open that store. I open that store in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I open that store at Osu. I receive the good free. I receive the good free. Talk like that. Don't move by your senses. Don't look at anything. Speak according to the Spirit. Don't consider the don't consider the senses. You don't need to know anybody. The Holy Ghost is your helper. Young men, young ladies, speak. This week is your week. This program is for you. Your future is you are releasing your future now. This is your future. What you are saying now is your future. I'm telling you now. What you are saying now, don't forget it. It's your future. Be talking. All of you watching, wherever you are, be talking. You can even take your phone and record what you are saying. And record what you are saying. Many times, I will record what I'm saying. I'll go and play it to myself again. Record what you are saying sometimes. And play it again and say it again and say it again and say it again this is my future this is my life the path of the just is as a shining light it shines brighter and brighter perfect and fabulous don't be distracted don't miss today don't miss this moment don't miss this moment the power of the holy ghost every young man your future is great say it 
there's no death on your part say it the word is nighty the word is so close it's in your heart and in your mouth the word of salvation is in your heart and in your mouth the word of grace is in your heart and in your mouth the word for your prosperity is in your heart and in your mouth in the name of the lord jesus and by the power of the holy ghost i dominate the world i rule the world i shine i reign i flourish like a palm tree i lay up gold like dust i lay up money like dust money can never finish in my hands i will always have and i will always have abundance I live in plenty. I live in surplus. This is the year of the prolific church. I proliferate everywhere. I proliferate everywhere. I spread everywhere. I expand everywhere. I'm a born and a shiny light. My light will never go out. My light will never dim. I'm like a city. I'm not a village. I'm not a room. I'm a city. I'm not a three-bedroom apartment. I am a city. Set upon the hill. I cannot be hidden. My success story cannot be hidden. My prosperity story cannot be hidden. Be talking, be talking. The Holy Ghost wants you to talk. Talk. The word is in your mouth. All of you watching, be talking. Be talking. Stand up, sister, in your room and be talking. Stand up, brother, in your room and be talking. Brother, park your car. Park your car and talk. Somebody is driving and you are watching. Look for somewhere safe to park. And talk, talk. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I, Pastor Bilton Lawa, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. I'm strengthened by Christ. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of work? Nay. I don't function by works. I function by the law of faith. I function by what I say. I function by what I say, not what I do. Listen, as we close, some ministers, when we say, when Pastor Chris say, keep saying it, they say it's not true. Uh, keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. All those who are complaining that Pastor Chris, our pastor is telling us, keep saying it. Where are they? Many of them are sitting in their own church. The man of God is reaching eight, seven billion people. Rhapsody of Reality is translated to 7,858 languages. They have not even written one book. Who are you supposed to listen to? The word is in my mouth. Not of works. Don't say, oh, I will do a lot of things, I will get money. No, the money is in my mouth. Young men, the money is where? Young ladies, the money is where? I've told you, ladies, don't be waiting for you to marry a rich man. Be so rich. Let your husband meet you rich. And don't marry a poor man. Ladies, are you hearing me? Yeah. What was he doing that he was poor? He's not speaking. So I've been in Christ for 15 years and you are still poor like this. I'm not marrying you. So yeah, but there's love. No, no it's not, this is not love. God didn't say I should love the one I want to marry. God didn't say so. You don't need to love anybody before you marry the person. There's no place in the Bible that the Bible says love the one you want to marry. There's nothing like that. You can marry without love. You've watched too many films. 
There's too many films. You're not listening to the Bible. We are looking for a guy that's coming on the horse. In Accra. Do you see us in Accra? Listen, sister, you have to start talking now. I'm marrying a loaded brother. Not looking. Brother, final warning be loaded. <laughs> Lift up your hands. I'm loaded. I'm loaded, 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 loaded. Don't marry, don't marry any brother that, that has plans. He said he has plans. What, what plans? I'm planning on buying a car. I'm planning on buying. I'm planning on buying a car. I'm planning on buying. I'm planning. I'm planning. I'm planning. I'm planning. So when you finish the plan, come and look for me. No, not after this thing. The brother is still broke. Something's wrong. Something's wrong in his heart. Oh, brother, say, I'm loaded. I have told you, the sister will not marry you. There's no time to waste. Jesus is coming. They now come and marry you, then you are now say, We are putting our faith to work. Put it to work now. Glory. Sister, say, I'm ready. You take over the city, take over the nation, take over Ghana. No man stopping you. No man stopping you. Be the president of Ghana. Be the minister in Ghana. Take over the policies. Take over the businesses. Take over the banks. Take over the industries. Take over the market. Take over the financial sector. I say take over. Take over the city. Yay! In a program like this, let me tell you, you you have to you have to be violent. In a program like this, you don't stand straight. You say, I take over the job, I take over the business, I take over the company. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the money is mine, the business is mine. Listen, the man of God, Pastor Chris says, a quiet Christian will not go far. We roar like a lion. When I'm praying, when the anointing is on me, hallelujah, the room becomes small. I, t I say the name, can I smile? Can I smile? Can I smile? Can I smile? Move your body, move your leg, and speak the word. Don't just, don't just stand and say, the, the, the business is mine. The business is mine. The business is mine. What is that? In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I lay hold on it. I lay hold on it. Yeah. Yeah. What the business is mine. Lift up your hand before the Lord. When the anointing came upon Elijah, he, he has run the king us. Oh. Can you see your future? 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 Are you great? Are you rich? Are you influential? Are you powerful? Hey! Our parents didn't hear these things. They didn't hear these things. They go to church. The minister said, We are nothing in your eyes. We are like an ant in your eyes. And he just said, Ah, Lord, I'm nothing. And they end up as nothing. Not our generation. Knowledge has come. Understanding has come. Lift up your eyes and say this hand. 
will never be for coins. Say, mark this hand. This hand is an anointed hand for mega money, mega prosperity. Say, look at my hand. This hand will deal with billions. <laughs> You'll be talking. When you live here, be talking. When you enter your car, be talking. When you get to your house, open your door, enter like a champion. Say the name of Jesus. I flourish like a palm tree. Lift your hand before the Lord. Heaven is waiting for you to speak. Jesus is the high priest of what you say. He's waiting for you to say something. He needs you to speak. Worship him, everybody. We'll continue tomorrow. Hey, Rock. I love you all. When you are going on, when you are going on, you move like this. Low text. Catch up. Ah! Low text, low text, low text. Hey! I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you all. Shout, 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 shout.